Hi everyone, I am Shubham Garg and welcome back to the lecture series of Tanner. So in today's lecture, we are going to see how to calculate the propagation delay of an inverter. Okay, so basically talking about the propagation delay, propagation delay is basically the delay between the input and output. Okay, that is uh, when the input waveform uh, is occurring time for the input waveform uh, and the output waveform to switch from low to high and high to low. Okay, so basically we will be calculating the propagation delay from the waveform of the inverter. So this is the final delay that is uh, the sum average of TPLH and TPHL that is uh, time for pulse to go from low to high plus the time for pulse to go to high to low uh, divided by 2 that is the average of both of these things. Okay, so uh, we will be calculating the proper propagation delay. Alright, so here uh, you can see is the inverter. Okay, you can create the inverter in any way you want. You can use the probes and everything or uh, as shown in the previous video, you can uh, use the T-SPICE code. So I will be using the T-SPICE and well, we will be running the simulations. Okay, so here, here is the T-SPICE code for this uh, inverter. Okay, again, we have used these four commands. Okay, because we have to do, we have to just perform the transient analysis. All right. So here these four commands are there. Now we are going to run the simulation. So let's run the simulation and then we will see how we can calculate all these TPHL, TPLH values. Okay. So here is our uh, uh, this waveform. Okay. So first of all, let's separate the waveform and uh, what you need to do is you need to zoom the waveform. See, now we need two values that is uh, the time difference uh, for pulse going low to high and for high to low. Okay, so for that we need to specify, uh, we need to, uh, you know, analyze the waveform at the particular time period that is from where this output is going from high to low and one for where output is going from low to high. So take any of, any of the waveform. Uh, take uh, any time period that from where the output is high to low that is let's say here it is going from high to low so we will be taking this period according to uh, that is a, uh, almost from 35 to around 45 uh, nanoseconds all right so what you need to do you need to zoom in okay and just move the plot so that uh, you have this uh, yeah this on your window like this okay so here you can zoom it a bit, uh, it's up to you. So here you can zoom it and now you can see that you have uh, the plot, this plot that is uh, the output is going from high to low. Okay, that is TPHL we are going to calculate from this. So what we need to do is first of all, let's say, uh, let us combine this plot. Okay, so here we have combined the plot. Now we will be using vertical and horizontal bars. Okay, that is First of all, uh, if you know about the propagation delay, TPHL and TPLH values are calculated from a reference value of uh, 50%. All right. So here our voltage is 3.3. So we need to mark a line. Okay. We will be marking a line at T equal to T, let's say 50%. Okay. That is when the time is 50%, we are going to add this horizontal line. Okay, so uh, the value of highest voltage is 3.3. So we need to uh, T50% uh, will be at 3.3 divided by 2. Uh, basically not T50%, uh, that is actually the 50% of the voltage level. That is what I mean uh, by saying that 50%. Okay, that is the 50% level. So here uh, we will be marking the line at around 1.66. All right. So uh, we will be marking it at around 1.66. So here from top here, you can see there are these options uh, for horizontal and vertical bars. Okay. You can see here, this is vertical cursor bars. This is horizontal cursor bar. Okay. So we can click on horizontal cursor bar. I will just uh, remove the magnifier. Yeah. So here just click on horizontal cursor bar and you can see here, there is your horizontal cursor. Now here, uh, you, you can place it anywhere. So, you, uh, but we need to place it at 50%. That is 50% voltage level. That is 1.66. So here you can see on the top, uh, this uh, small box shows the position of the bar. Okay. So here you can see uh, the left one is the X coordinate and the right one is the Y coordinate. All right. Like here. 
So you can uh, see the coordinate from here easily and place it in at the correct position. So you can see uh, it is we need to place it in 1.66. So it is yeah at this point it is 1.66. Okay, uh, it got misplaced. Okay, now you know to move this uh, bar. What you need to do is you need to uh, select the bar first of all and click left alt. Okay, just hold the left alt and uh, move uh, move with your cursor. Okay, so here now remove this. Yeah, leave the left alt and you can see here uh, it is at 1.66. All right. So now we have placed our horizontal bar. Now uh, basically what the uh, TPHL and TPLH values to find out TPLH and PHL values. What we need to do is we need to uh, get the marking of two points. Okay, that is uh, talking about the two points. Uh, let's say one is X1 and another is X2. Okay, these points basically uh, we have placed a horizontal bar. So here when X1 let's say it is when output touches the horizontal bar and uh, X2 will be the when input touches the horizontal bar. Okay. So I will just show you in a moment what I mean. So now we need to add the vertical cursor bar. So from here. Uh, you just, cl just click on vertical cursor bar. You can see two vertical bars pop up. Okay, now select the bar and here this uh, you can see the green curve. It is going from high to low and it is at this point. At this point, it is cutting uh, the horizontal bar. So here we need to place this uh, vertical cursor bar to this point. Okay, that is where it intersects the horizontal cursor bar. Similarly, uh, this is our input that is the red line and it is cutting the uh, horizontal cursor bar here. Okay, so we will put this vertical bar and we will put it here. Okay, so basically this difference between these two vertical bars is actually the delay that is TPH not the complete delay it is a TPHL value that is because waveform is going from high to low. So this is the TPHL value. So uh, let us just zoom it. See the more accurate uh, your uh, bars are at the position, uh, the more accurate value of delay you will be getting. Okay, so just uh, here this we will make it more accurate. Yeah, so now it is very accurate now. Okay, so basically this uh, we just we just can't calculate the distance for TPHL and TPLH. What happens is that there is this X1 and X2 value. So uh, here you can see this value at this point uh, that is 40.423 something. This is the X1 value and similarly this is the second coordinate that is 40.5 something. All right. However, we can't just uh, directly take the difference and uh, we won't be having TPHL. We need to take the derivative of this. Okay. So now to calculate the derivative, either you can perform the full calculation or there is a great thing in Tana that is you can go to here view and uh, there will be the option that is view cursor table. Okay. So here the moment you click on view cursor table, you will see uh, all your cursor details. See here. So you can see this is the trace that is input and the output red one is the input uh, green one is the output. Here is the these coordinates that is y1 y2 or we were saying x1 x2 that's uh, okay. So uh, you are basically getting the gist. Now here uh, you can see that this delta this thing is the delay. Okay here that you can see uh, not the complete delay it is a TPHL value. Okay, so this delta that is 253.27. This is the uh, delay value. All right. So this uh, is the TPLH value for us. Okay. Now next thing what we need to calculate. Oh, sorry, uh, not this, uh, not this delta value, this delta value actually. Uh, yeah, my mistake. That was my mistake. Yeah, this delta value we can see that is 76.750 and something P. P is for uh, picoseconds. All right. So we can also see from here that is uh, these points are in nanoseconds and we can see. Okay, it moved a bit. Yeah, just a second. Okay, we can see these are uh, in nanoseconds and in between 40 
40.4 and 40.5 nanoseconds all the value will be there obviously in picoseconds so that's why we get these derivatives 76.75 something in picoseconds so here we have this value now here we have tphl as 76.75 if i am not wrong 76.7575 p all right similarly we are going to find tplh okay so here now again uh, just open the waveform editor okay we can close this for now okay just uh, unselect this cursor okay we will remove uh, uh, let the horizontal cursor uh, cursor bar remain okay uh, let's just zoom out a bit yeah so here now we need to find uh, the waveform for low to high we have high to low and now we need to find from low to high okay so we have high to low from this one and let's use for low to high this waveform that is from around 50 to 55 okay you can use any one uh, any waveform no problem it should be just it should be just from low to high so let's just zoom it yeah okay so this is for low to high and here we will use the vertical cursor bars again and now this vertical cursor bar will be there when input is intersecting this okay that is basically one for input and the other one uh, is where output is intersecting this uh, horizontal bar all right so let's just zoom in to see the accuracy okay it is very accurate yeah now it is more accurate right so uh, this we have marked now let's again go to view and click on cursor table all right okay so for here we will be seeing uh, these values the derivative values okay so you can see it is around 245.553 okay so basically it seems uh, like our waveform is not a good waveform because you see otherwise uh, tplh and tphl should be around almost same okay that uh, there should not be much difference between those values okay anyways let's just uh, let do one thing remove the plots and let's uh, take a look it seems there is uh, much more rise time or something uh, in the waveform let's take this one uh, some another one waveform yeah although it will be having the same options only but uh, let's try anyways uh, that's not a problem our main just is to calculate this yeah okay so anyways yeah it is uh, 238 point something all right so these this we have the values so here it is uh, just a second it was yeah here is the cursor it is uh, okay it is 240 point something all right so this is our second value that is 240.64 picoseconds all right so it is 240.64 p all right so now while calculating the delay we need to take the average of these two okay so it is actually 76.75 plus 240.64 whole thing divided by 2 okay so we will calculate this thing uh, that will be the final propagation delay all right so here let me open the calculator so 76.75 plus 240.64 divided by 2 so it is around 158.695 Okay, so 158.695.
दिस इज द फाइनल प्रोपोगेशन डिले एंड दैट इज हाउ यू कैलकुलेट द प्रोपोगेशन डिले ऑल राइट सो यू जस्ट नीड टू मेक दीज प्लॉट्स एंड दिस इज हाउ यू विल बी गेटिंग द फाइनल वैल्यू फॉर दिस फाइनल प्रोपोगेशन डिले वैल्यू ओके सो यू कैन मूव इट यूजिंग ऑल्ट एंड होल्डिंग द कर्ज All right. So this is how you can get the final value, and uh, you are able. This is how you are able to uh, calculate the final propagation delay. So uh, this is all for this video. Okay. Uh, I hope it is clear how to calculate propagation delay, and uh, we will be having uh, discussing much more concepts in future. Okay. So uh, this is all for this video. See you guys in the next video.